Um, like Daniel said, I'm going to be talking about uh, monitoring Spinnaker as an application and using Prometheus operator to do it. So uh, I'm going to talk about GKE specifically, but a lot of this is applicable to any Kubernetes environment as well. Um, so a little quick introduction on me. Uh, I am a cloud consultant, a partner at containerheroes.com, um, and I consult companies um, on all sorts of things, uh, but I also partner with the Google PSO team and uh, spent most of this year um, leading the CICD effort on a very large on-prem to GCP migration, and that's where a lot of this uh, information that you're about to see comes from, and I contributed back to the open source as much as I could. Um, so the scenario we're talking about today is you're running Spinnaker on Kubernetes. You're an operator of Spinnaker. Uh, and you're familiar with Prometheus, Grafana, Alert Manager, that's cool. But you want to monitor Spinnaker. Um, you want to understand what's going on in your application. You want to see, make sure that you're giving enough resources to Spinnaker to be able to service all of your users, which are your internal developer teams. So um, specifically, what we want to do in kind of the end state of where I'm going to take you is kind of these things. So you want to be able to pull up Prometheus, and you want to see Spinnaker as what Prometheus calls targets. Um, and so in this screen here, it's probably pretty hard to see, but all those blue things are Kubernetes pod labels, and each one of those rows are the different microservices that compose Spinnaker. So CloudDriver, Orca, Echo, all those are in that list right there, and they're all different, different targets. You can see at uh, the last time that Prometheus scraped metrics from each of them. Then we want to be able to write some queries. Uh, if you've got fat fingers like me and you want to be able to see what are all the metrics that Spinnaker is just throwing up, uh, Prometheus, as a lot of you know, already has some nice auto completion on all these metrics. And so you can just type in Orca and be like, oh, sweet, look at all these metrics for Orca. Uh, type in CloudDriver and see all a bunch of metrics here uh, in your Prometheus query, query writer. And then we want to be able to run some queries. So this is, again, it's, it's a screenshot, so it's a, in, a little far away for everybody. But basically here, I'm just trying to see um, how many completed executions have been run on Orca here and getting some values back in the corner. And uh, Only three for one of them, because uh, this is like a brand new cluster and install that I did the other day. So uh, that's why we have very low numbers. But in production, obviously, you'd have more than three executions. But you also want to see some sweet Grafana graphs. You want to see some graphs of like what's going on with my Spinnaker install. What's, how much memory is being used? How many people are using different stages? What applications are running right now? Um, and so we're going to get into all that. So um, I want to do a little bit of backstory. Um, I, I don't know how many of you are really super familiar with Kubernetes. Um, the concept of operators. Um, I know for me, when you start to look into a lot of these things, uh, a lot of people just skip over the backstory. So I'm going to go over some context real quick. What's an operator um, at all? So um, a Kubernetes operator is um, it's just a method of packaging a specific ap application and running it on Kubernetes and then responding to different manifests that are applied to the cluster and then updating the application. So first and foremost, it installs an application. Um, in our uh, instance, uh, we're installing Prometheus. Um, and then it's going to define a bunch of CRDs, so custom resource definitions, um, where those are things that are unique to the application. You can kubectl apply a manifest, the CRD, and the operator will pick up on it and then n understand how to make modifications to the running application. Um, in response to the CRD you applied. So um, yeah, operatorhub.io is a place where you can see a bunch of Kubernetes operators. Uh, there is one for Spinnaker that actually, uh, Armory has its own, OpsMX has another. Um, there are a lot of, it's in the works right now to kind of discuss if there should be kind of an official Spinnaker community one. So you can look at that for next year. Um, but. Prometheus operator specifically is going to do a lot of stuff. And it's, so it's going to install Prometheus, Grafana, and Alert Manager, and uh, CubeStats. And then it's going to define uh, a bunch of CRDs and then react to those CRDs when we 
um, and solve them. So a bunch of stuff going on here, um, but uh, it's, gonna, it's going to make your life a lot easier by installing all these applications just for you and automatically hook up Grafana to read from Prometheus right away. Um, so it's, it's a good thing to use. So here's what it looks like when you have Spinnaker running on a GKE specifically, but this could be any Kubernetes cluster, all of your microservices for Spinnaker, and then um, Prometheus operator, you can see on the top six or so, um, has different deployments for Grafana, operator itself, um, alert manager, and Prometheus itself. So um, how do we get there? What, how do we set this up? Well, um, first step is a pretty easy, straightforward Halyard command of just enabling a Prometheus metric store. Um, there are different types of metric stores for uh, Spinnaker. Um, Datadog and Stackdriver are the other two. Um, Datadog uh, and Stackdriver are obviously paid services. Uh, Stackdriver is a pretty popular one because it obviously comes with GCP, but um, it can be very verbose. Spinnaker by default throws lots of and lots of metrics, and so if you're not uh, paying attention to that and you want to see how high your stack driver bill can get, uh, you should enable it and you should see how it goes. Um, there's, a, there's a PR, I think they just got merged last month, um, kind of putting some uh, opinions and experience that one of the customers uh, ran into in the actual documentation now. So when you actually go look at the stack driver documentation now, you'll see a little bit of a, a warning. Um, Prometheus is great, but um, after you enable one of these three stores, um, you'll see a sidecar in all of the pods. So all of your Orca pods, Cloud Driver pods, all of the microservice pods, if you dial into one of the pods and look at the actual containers running, after you've enabled and deployed a metric store, you'll see a monitoring daemon. The monitoring daemon is um, just another repo in the Spinnaker organization on GitHub. It's another Spring application that uh, knows how to talk to the microservice, and Orca in this case, and then expose a port for Prometheus to scrape. So in the Prometheus operator world, um, one of the CRDs that it defines is called a service monitor. And what that means is it's essentially a way to say, hey Prometheus, I've got these places on my cluster where you can scrape metrics, so go and get them. Um, this is the service manager monitor that uh, I used on just a fresh Spinnaker install. Um, so it has all the default values when you install Spinnaker. These are the default values, these are the default ports and paths that you're going to find. Um, there's only one area on line nine there. I have a little comment. Um, that's the default value, but if you change it for some reason, then that's what you need to change. Um, so um, yeah. That's just a, a way for Prometheus to select which pods it should query for metrics, where, what port, and what path it should do that on. And then the last thing um, is that the Spinnaker monitoring repo uh, underneath Spinnaker on GitHub has a bunch of awesome Grafana dashboards like that you can use and that they're just right away, here, here's some great dashboards. They're all JSON files. Uh, which is cool if you're in a VM land, uh, you can upload them. And even in the Kubernetes world, on a running Grafana pod, I could do kubectl cp and then upload all these JSON things. Uh, but in the Kubernetes world, we don't ever really want to have like a pet, that's like having a pet VM. We don't want to have a pet pod, because as you like delete it and then have a new pod and then, and then all those are gone, right? Um, and so in the Kubernetes world, we either want it to be a YAML manifest or some kind of other infrastructure as code where you can, uh, you can use those. And so um, that's kind of step three, to shoehorn these, this big pile of JSON to get all these Grafana dashboards. Um, so isn't there an easier way? Um, well, let's check this out. Um, the documentation, this is super small, but um, the official Spinnaker documentation, if you're running Spinnaker and Prometheus on virtual machines. Oh, look at this. There's an apt, apt git install Spinnaker monitoring. And then it's just a, what an easy setup script. Isn't that nice? Shouldn't we get one for Kubernetes? Well, if you are deploying Spinnaker on Kubernetes, hang tight, support is coming. That's literally what the doc said earlier this year. Um, so <laughs> I was uh, at one of our clients uh, with 
almost 100 Kubernetes clusters deploying to Spinnaker and running Spinnaker on Kubernetes, and uh, this is what I was what I was given. So uh, great. Well, forget that. Let's uh, let's make a script our own dang selves and open source it. So that's what I did, um, and so now uh, we can look at the docs right before virtual machines, because it's 2019, so let's talk Kubernetes, uh, is setup scripts. So let's read about Prometheus operator support, and there's a setup.sh script that does all this stuff for you, and you're good to go. Um, so there's even a Prometheus operator uh, directory. So this is the uh, Spinnaker monitoring GitHub repo. This is super small, let me bump it up. Datadog, Prometheus stack driver. Now there's one just for Prometheus Operator. Yes. Um, here's a big a readme in here to help you. Here's your service monitor already defined for you. Um, here's, uh, here's the setup script. Uh, we'll let's look at it real quick. So this is a bunch of bash, uh, but like most bash, it, it looks more intimidating than it actually is. Um, basically, all we're doing here is just applying your service monitor. So again, the service monitor that's in this repo, that's the official Spinnaker monitoring repo, is the defaults that you will use when you install Spinnaker. If for some reason you change some of those, um, that's fine. The only place you would actually change it, I can show you real quick, is if you, um, Prometheus operator has a set of labels that it looks for on, config, on service monitors and that's what this service monitor selector attribute is. It says, here's the label that a service monitor should have in order for me to pick up on it and then apply it to a Prometheus and process it as a service monitor. Um, so by default, when you install a Prometheus monitor operator, this is the value. So if you change that, then good for you, go change it, but it's right there. The next thing in our setup script, we this is uh, basically looking at all of the JSON dashboards in the Prometheus directory, all those VM people, and <laughs> process it into a YAML file, and then apply all those generated dashboards. Um, we can look at that real quick, but um, the template, again, this is a CRD, this is the way Prometheus operator works again. So if you don't want you know, upload all these JSON files to your Grafana pod and then have the pod disappear and all your graphs disappear. You want to put those as config maps on your cluster and then the Prometheus operator can see that because we apply this label, Grafana dashboard equals true. And then the Prometheus operator picks up on it and goes, oh, there's a new config map with this label on it. Let me apply it and add it to all my Grafana pods to get you a nice dashboard. So that's what's going on there. Um, so again, that setup script is pretty simple, it's doing very, just a couple of steps, um, but it has to do all this kind of shoehorning of the JSON. But as that JSON is updated in the Prometheus world, you get it for free here with this uh, with the script. So um, this is something I ran into, what if you use Terraform? So um, the Spinnaker organization is not really, you know, obviously in charge of any kind of infrastructure as code, but as you as operators of Spinnaker may run into this. Um, well, I have a repo here where you can actually generate all of those dashboards and use it in a Terraform template. So here's a Terraform file applying a Kubernetes config map. And again, the setup script here downloads the latest from the Spinnaker monitoring repo, gets all those Prometheus Grafana dashboards that have, that's kind of the central place for the monitoring and the community to store where we think those graphs should go. Download it and then put it into a Terraform repo, Terraform format for you then to do a Terraform apply on and have those all those config maps. Check on all those graphs into your uh, source code and uh, you're good, good to go. Um, so in that repo too, um, I have a Helm directory as well that just does the same thing, but just for YAML. But if you all want to go later and look at this, I have a, a nice demo script in here that actually spins up a new cluster on GKE for you, installs Spinnaker, installs Prometheus Operator, 
and then does the same same um, steps that the setup script does, where we just apply your service monitor, and then apply uh, generate a bunch of these dashboards, and then apply them for you. Um, so if you want to go through that, um, it's really nice. I've got it uh, running, and we can look at it in a second here. But um, but that's what that does. Okay, so um, I guess real quick, any questions on any of that? Yeah. Yep, uh, that supports 12. Yep, use that in 12. Yeah, uh, that will just output the Kubernetes config map resources. Uh, and so you can put that in any resource you want. So ideally, in your Terraform workspaces, each Terraform workspace would map to a GitHub repo. And what I'm saying here is you would kind of, you would check in those Terraform files into that repo and they'd be in that workspace. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's kind of go on to then, what does it mean to monitor Spinnaker? So we have Spinnaker running, um, but we want to make sure that we're servicing all of our users pretty well. So um, real quick, we'll introduce what metrics, types of metrics Spinnaker emits. Each of its microservices emits a bunch of metrics, trying to report back what's going on in each of the microservices. And unless you're one of the developers who contributed to the microservice, it will be really hard for you to understand which metrics it's popping off and why, well, what those mean, right? Um, the three types that Spinnaker emits are counters, which are just increasing numbers, numbers that get bigger, a gauge, which is just a random instantaneous number, um, and a timer always in nanoseconds. Um, so if you're, again, if you're getting too much data to process, you'll likely run into this um, with like Stackdriver. Um, you can actually limit which metrics are collected with regex. Um, so again, the monitoring daemon, the monitoring sidecar is a spring uh, boot application and it, you can, in the spring profile here, you can also put in some regex. So for instance, I just wanna have these two metrics this is where you would do it uh, currently right now. Um, this will change in 2020. Um, um, discussing with uh, Rob and Netflix and some of these other people that are working on this, on the monitoring side of things. Uh, ideally, what's going to happen is that each microservice can, will kind of accept a different flag level, so kind of almost like a verbosity level, really. Um, I'm just kind of getting to know these services, so just help me, give me the bare minimum amount of metrics that I care about, or I have really detailed, trying to debug, figure out what's going on. So the kind of configuration of some of those uh, is going to change in 2020, so you can look out for that. So what are some use cases for wanting to, like even see metrics that Spinnaker um, emits? Um, well, you want to be able to support your users, your developer teams, when they're having releases and when you're updating Spinnaker. Um, it was super helpful countless times working with big customers where um, we would be, we could hop onto a Grafana graph and see which applications are currently running, which stages they're running on, and how long they've been running, and be able to say things to a customer like, hey, I noticed this deployment's been taking forever. What's the backstory, right? Um, your manual judgment has been running for 14 days. Are you guys gonna push yes or no? Or like, you know, what's up? Um, the other case where it came in handy was when you're making updates to Spinnaker, so rolling out new versions. Spinnaker's always going really fast as a community, which is awesome to see. Um, and if you're updating it frequently, you know, it's really helpful to see like, oh, you know, Jane is doing a new deployment. So, hey, Jane, you might have to hit refresh on your screen in a second, because I'm about to release a new version. Um, it's also really helpful when you're working with the people in the community around a microservice. So I ran into this a bunch uh, with CloudDriver. If any of you were here for the Kubernetes talk that just happened in this room, um, quite a few of those uh, improvements that they were talking about um, came from some clients that I worked with and being able to have metrics um, to be able to actually show here's the performance that we're having in CloudDriver and here's what metrics are going off was really helpful in actually getting um, support from the people that were most familiar with those microservice code. You also want to use a lot of this monitoring when, in order to provide a really stable application. So when do we need to actually scale Spinnaker resources? When do we need to get more pods of 
uh, Orca or Cloud Driver. Those are the main two that you're going to be focused on. Um, yeah, and so then you can also add alerts to Alert Manager to say, hey, you know, we're getting bottlenecked here on some of these resources. We need to put some more horsepower behind one of these microservices. All right, so, okay, I've got uh, some metrics. I have some great use cases. Well, okay, what happens when these metrics go haywire? Well, eventually the vision is to kind of make a run book. Um, that's kind of the 2020 vision. We'll s so be on the lookout for that in 2020. Uh, that's kind of a community effort to map a lot of these metrics more towards options uh, and things that you might actually want to change or might actually want to uh, reconfigure. Um, in the meantime, probably the best resource that I found um, to actually understand what you should do and what some of these metrics mean is an awesome blog post last year from Rob at Netflix, who's over there. Hey, Rob. Um, <laughs> so it took Rob like a month to put this one blog post together. It's like super detailed. Uh, we can look at it real quick, but uh, I linked to it in a bunch of things and like dude here. Um, but it's super long and he does an awesome job of like showing all these graphs of here's how we're using it and here are the metrics and here's this metric and what does that mean and here's what you should do when that metric goes off. Um, it, I probably spent like a month digesting all of this and trying to understand exactly what everything meant and, uh, and being able to you know, then put it into action. Um, for instance, one of his best recommendations is, is if you get users that come to you and just say, Spinnaker is slow. There's one metric in Orca um, called ready messages that that should also always be zero. And if it's more than zero, then that means that there are tasks just sitting there waiting for Orca to pick it up and go process it. And that's obviously really, really bad. So uh, you want more, more Orca pods then <laughs> or more Orca uh, memory CPU. But um, if only you had a nice dashboard, nice Grafana dashboard from Rob's awesome post that helped you identify those metrics and then, you know, put Rob's explanation and context around those metrics right in there along with some alerts. Well, I made it and it's open sourced. It's in uh, one of my repos. Um, I'll link to it here. It's called the, I call it the RZ dashboard. Uh, it's, in, it's in this dashboard here. And so not only up here in this JSON, by the way, this is, this is what um, one of these generated YAML files will look like after you run my script that takes some of the JSON out. You'll get a config map here with a Grafana dashboard true label, and then you'll have this data of a JSON, and it's all just shoved in here. So not only do we have some, some the actual Grafana dashboard, but then you can, I mean, you can't read, I guess you can read some of this, but this is actually English. This is Rob's blog post. Like this is Rob's, like I literally copy and pasted some of Rob's awesome paragraphs explaining what this metric is so that you can go into Grafana and just hover over it and go, oh yeah, that's what that is. That's why I care about that, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, the ones on the right side actually even have health monitors on them. So you can actually already predefined for you to say, oh, this is good. This is bad. Cool. <clears throat> um, all right. Any questions before we Move on. Okay. Yeah. Does the Grafana has a monitor a alerting uh, option, or it's only for? So Grafana has um, kind of uh, they call it health checks, and so it can be you know green, uh, healthy or unhealthy, and then Alert Manager can interface with other services like Slack or text message or email in order to actually send an alert. Um, it can actually, it also has just a little dashboard to show you status of different alerts as well. But um, yeah, so it's kind of a combination of Grafana and Alert Manager. Um, Grafana in the dashboard can tell you whether that metric is healthy or not. And then it's up to you to configure Alert Manager to say, I'm gonna write it out to Slack or I'm gonna call somebody or whatever you wanna do. Anything else? Cool. Uh, let's do a little bit of demoing. Um, this, whoops, this will be a little difficult. Um, there, I'm gonna switch computers here real quick. <coughs> So 
So um, give this a second. Ah, cool. That's super slow, little, but um, so I've got three clusters on GKE here, um, about 150 gigs of memory here and about 40 CPUs. Um, so one of them is actually running Spinnaker, and another one is just a blank. So I might actually we'll see if uh, the demo gods like us or not, and maybe I'll. Maybe I'll actually write to uh, do in the, the codes, but we can also just jump into the finished product here. Um, let's just look at that first. So um, this is just the Spinnaker Prometheus repo that I have where I have that demo. Um, I also have some really handy connect and disconnect kubectl port forward commands in there, so that's what I was just running. Um, so we just connected to Spinnaker on one of my clusters. Here's a Hello World application that just does a straightforward Kubernetes v2 provider deployment um, on our app cluster. And if I just restart it, we can get some graphs. Um, so here's one that is, uh, so I guess I should step back for a second. This is besides the RZ dashboard. Uh, these are all the dashboards that are in the Spinnaker monitoring repo right now that you can go out and get. There is one for each microservice. Um, you can see that's what the top eight are. Then there's one for specific Spinnaker application details, one for AWS, one for GCP, one for just Kubernetes, and then one called minimalist that someone decided was kind of just nice to look at. Um, so each of them provide different metrics. They all, uh, after we have this Prometheus operator setup going, um, already is configured to listen to Prometheus. Um, so here's um, a, the dashboard that breaks everything down by application. So I can hover over this, and uh, this is probably really hard to see for most people in the back, but this is saying that the Hello World application used the, the deploy manifest stage. Um, and so, yeah, like that's good. That's what I want to see, the data coming in and have live graphs here to help me understand what's, what's going on here. Um, Here's that uh, RZ Spinnaker dashboard I was talking about. Uh, that's pretty helpful. So this is that Orca Q depth that we were discussing uh, before. And uh, yeah, that's a long overlay, but uh, it's helpful uh, to be able to read Rob, Rob's awesome wise words here um, to remember, oh yeah, what is this thing and why do I care about it? Um, and that's, uh, so that's green. Um, uh, yeah, this, this is a really helpful graph to see. Um, Basically, like I said before, Orca has a queues of tasks, and if it doesn't have enough uh, resources to keep up with that queue and keep things moving, things will just sit in the queue. And uh, so that's obviously really bad. Um, here's one for just Orca. All of these uh, microservices also have memory usage graphs down here, which are really nice to be able to, um, to, be able to see. Um, so that's really cool. Cloud driver is the other one too that you're going to want to make sure is scaling and operating well. Um, and so you can see again, just a bunch of, bunch of awesome data around any kind of failures, memory usage, um, latency. Um, yeah, it's, it's really helpful. Um, yeah, so Any other questions before I move on? Okay. Uh, yeah. What's that? The graph that you show of the application state, it shows the current, this one, yeah. the left one. It's the actual applications that are. Uh, this is oh. the so Hello if, World application. So if we have multiple applications on the same spinnaker, so you'll see everything that is yeah, yeah. going to Yeah, yeah. So um, we can actually. So I wrote a 
script that I've got like four different uh, applications here. I'll go back for a second. Uh, I've got ones just that explain just some basic things. So there's one that just kind of waits for a certain amount of time, one that just says a hello world, uh, one that does a manual judgment here. Um, we can look at canarying here in a second, but I just popped off a whole ton of uh, triggers. Um, so we can go back and look. Yeah. So five minutes is the least we can do. But uh, so yeah, you can see we just popped off a few more um, applications. So yeah, a lot more. Um, so I, I can step through if it's helpful at some point. Uh, uh, the actual uh, each line that the setup script is doing. Uh, but one thing I probably want to get to uh, that would be fun is um, one thing I wanted to mention was canarying with Prometheus. Um, so again, canarying, you can use different metric stores, different ways to collect that. One situation we ran into uh, with, a, with one of our clients was what if you have multiple clusters and you usually, like I said, you want to install Prometheus Operator on probably all of your clusters. Um, in this case, you know, we, you can use whatever you're using to provision clusters and then put, you know, kind of pre-installed applications on each cluster. Um, in our, our case, we're using Terraform. Um, so we have all these clusters. We have like 100 GKE clusters, and they all have Prometheus Operator on them. You're going to deploy an application to one of those clusters. It's going to then report metrics to that cluster's instance of Prometheus. Well, how does the Spinnaker you're running over on this cluster see all these other clusters, Prometheus instances, to be able to analyze metrics on an application that you just deployed on that cluster, right? And then you can make a canary analysis and decision, right? So um, again, canary has different metric stores options, but one of the things we uh, had to work with the awesome core Spinnaker team um, Maggie did an awesome job, I don't think she's here, but she did an awesome job with the UI here. We're actually now in your canary analysis stage. If you have multiple metrics accounts, you can select them. So this Spinnaker cluster is the cluster where I'm running Spinnaker. This is my application cluster where I'm deploying my application. Um, and so I can just go in there and, uh, and, and tell it to hit uh, the right Prometheus instance. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, are there any predefined alerts? Are there any predefined um, alerts which we can use? So um, I left the alert manager alerts part up to you and your installation um, because obviously when you're you know deploying setting up with your Slack account and your Twilio credentials and stuff like that. I left that to you guys. Um, the RZ dashboard has, you know, some health status on here. So you could see that green heart there says, like, we're good. And if that were to be in a bad state, it would be red and start complaining. And so you would see stuff. But I left the kind of alerting to external services configuration up to, up to you. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Cool, awesome, thanks for coming.